Welcome to the Architect of Resilience podcast, where we explore the secrets of overcoming life's challenges and unlocking unstoppable strength through deep personal conversations and expert insights. Welcome back to another episode of the Architect of Resilience here with Anthony Castor, continuing our piece on cellular medicine and peptides. And one of the things I wanted to get your take on, because you know, we talk about a lot of different interventions for peptides, and it really is, you know, when we're using those, what are we trying to accomplish? What thought process do we think around? And in discussions, you've used the term with me, you know, polypharmacy. Um, yeah, what do we need to think about when deploying, a, you know, the numerous different options that we discuss? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's an um, excellent topic and uh, super cool to be here in person talking about this um, rare treat. So when we think about, you know, how do we create a peptide stack? How are we putting all these things together? How are we going to make them work? Um, it's really, it's fun. It's like solving a puzzle. And I always kind of think in terms of, you know, you've got this outcome that you want. And um, it's going to be a particular training stimulus. Um, ultimately, when we think about a training stimulus, it's the biggest stress that we have 100% control over. So I like to kind of make that the centerpiece, the focal point. And then when we're thinking about how we build around that, um, probably a good thing to discuss is if we're talking about something like, you know, exogenous testosterone, we're adding something to the equation. So we can kind of take things to a super physiologic range. Um, with peptides, what we're trying to do is we're um, creating the architecture that goes into um, putting these protocols together. It's more about supporting the process. So kind of step by step, the way I look at this, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to identify the training stimulus and what are the bottlenecks. So just to give you an example, um, say we're doing on, uh, I'm trying to get stronger, neurological hypertrophy. Um, bottlenecks are going to be nervous system performance, and that's going to manifest with things like, um, because our nervous system governs digestion, sleep, we're going to see those things start to not work as well as they're supposed to. But we know to really, you know, be able to express strength, see those neural adaptations, um, we need to spend a little bit longer in that training stimulus. This is where peptides come in. Um, we identify what the bottlenecks are and what the cellular pathways are around them. And when we talk about cellular pathways, you know, just to give you a simple example, um, might be something like, um, trying to think of a simple example of a cellular pathway, but um, take the Krebs cycle, for example, just for, for a talk point. We can look at all the steps in there and we can think about like, which one of those is a rate limiting factor? And what would we need to do to support that particular part of that cell cycle? Because really, when we talk about bottlenecks, to explain that a little bit better, um, I like to use the analogy, it's like if you're driving on a highway. I live in Columbus, so I'll say I'm driving on 270, making my way around uh, Columbus. And I'm trying to go to Easton Mall, exit's closed. So I can go to the exit before it, I can go to the exit after it, I'm still going to get there. Um, and that's what we do. We think about what are the cellular pathways around it, how do we reroute this, this trip, um, and what are the tools we need to do that? And that's where we start picking the peptides. We look at the mechanism of action. How do these peptides work? And we think about the pathways that we're trying to um, go down, pathway literally like the, the route, the pathway that we're trying to go down. And that's where the fun comes in. Now, you know, we're just kind of, We've got this checklist of things we need to uh, check off in terms of mechanism, in terms of pathway. And we also have to make sure, and this is kind of where the polypharmacy comes in, that with all these great tools to choose from, you know, some of them are going to have overlap. Some of them are going to cancel each other out. Um, and some of them are going to actually complement what each other are doing. So it um, doesn't so much matter which peptide you're starting with, but having a clear understanding of mechanism, pathways, ensures that as you're building around that and the training stimulus, you're doing things that are going to support the process rather than create another roadblock or detour. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely see that. Cause there's a lot of, 
you know, we talk about a lot of different peptides and like, hey, this peptide is great for this. And then mention, oh, this peptide is also great for this. And it may be via the same pathway or different pathways. Yeah. And like you said, so sometimes building along the same pathways doesn't mean ramping that higher because it might not be adding. We already have that pathway addressed. Yeah. Um, and other times it's, you know, it might be a non-redundant pathway where we're actually two different pathways and we're able to enhance that, uh, that bottleneck even further, right? Absolutely, yeah. And then the example that we discussed in our last episode, I think is a really great one around slew and BAM, mm -hmm. using those concurrently to actually being counterproductive yeah, because they're canceling each other out and actually con creating a potentially negative uh, outcome, not just canceling each other. Let's dive into the world of optimizing your overall health. With pushing my physical limits, I encountered significant reductions in my health, and I reached out to Merrick Health as the premier telehealth service. I loved their personalized health coaching from the comfort of my home. They empower you with the choice of self-service diagnostic labs, or what I chose, the guided optimization with expert interpretations of blood work, health coaching, and with medications delivered to my door. Merrick Health is your partner in optimizing your health. Listeners can seize a fantastic 10% discount off their first blood work with code resilience at MerrickHealth.com. That's code resilience for 10% off. Yeah, essentially to build on the analogy, I think um, you explained it's a lot like uh, having a car in neutral, pushing the gas, burning the gas and not going anywhere. And um, what that translates to when we're thinking about our mitochondria is that complex one and complex three, we've got those four complexes leading up to, of course, complex five, where uh, uh, oxidative phosphorylation is complete. Um, essentially, when we're uh, overloading these two complexes, what's that look like? Well, that looks like oxidative stress. And it's a perfect example of, well, gosh, you know, if um, I'm taking these two mitochondrial peptides, they're both going to cause mitochondrial biogenesis. I want to have more mitochondria. I want to have better insulin sensitivity. Why wouldn't this work? Well, it wouldn't work because um, you've got two things that essentially work through a different mechanism. You're overloading um, essentially two of those five complexes. Um, and when you have that kind of uneven distribution of work across those complexes, um, it's a lot like if uh, you had a car, drive it, uh, making a right turn, and you never decide to make left, well, you're probably going to wear the wheels down on that side a little bit faster. And in the case of a mitochondrial com complex, as you know, that's oxidative stress. And when we think about things like um, neural peptides, even um, to kind of build on that, uh, one of the, and, and you probably get it even more than I do with the clients that you work with, people looking to improve cognitive performance. Um, you know, that's a, and we look at the peptides we have to choose from. And I mean, it sounds like uh, you've got a hundred miracles in a bottle or a nasal spray, and these are all amazing peptides, but, um, I had an interesting conversation with a client the other day when we were talking about neural optimization. And this kind of goes to that whole bottleneck theory of mine. You know, as we were discussing it, I was asking them, you know, do you have trouble with recall? Do you have trouble with processing? Do you have trouble with, um, you know, short-term, long-term memory? Where, where's the problem at? And they were saying, you know, I get so many things that pop up during the day. I feel like I'm in reaction mode and then I can't remember simple things. So the, you know, I've never met a peptide I don't like, but <laughs> this is a good example where um, maybe there's not a peptide for that before we address the bottleneck is actually, you know, stress management and um, kind of an interesting bit of trivia when we're stressed out, we only use 35% of our brain and the part that gets inhibited is our prefrontal cortex where acetylcholine is going to be made, things for our short-term memory. Um, so for that person, you know, the advice I'd give them is um, let's, before we figure out what peptides are going to be optimal, let's work on stress management. Um, and that just looks like when you feel like things are getting really stressful, pause, just count to 10 slowly, a couple belly breaths, um, and think about things. And then also, you know, uh, in terms of recall, some simple things we can do to kind of um, jumpstart that engine. Uh, one of the strongest correlations we have with memory, smell. 
In fact, in Alzheimer's patients, there's a 100% correlation, not 99, 100% correlation um, with decreased sense of smell and decreased memory. And if you think about it, um, you know, you smell, um, um, I don't know, for me, like if I smell um, uh, salt water instantly, I think of the ocean. Mm -hmm. And um, for a lot of people, there's experiences like that. Uh, my seventh grade girlfriend will probably tell you if she smells brute, she's like, oh my God, that loser I dated in seventh grade. <laughs> but um, um, kind of leveraging that in terms of having that ability to recall in stressful situations when there's something you have to remember, um, focus on how it smells and try to um, then think about that smell when you're remembering. And then um, kind of getting back to, well, how do we layer in the peptides? Once we've kind of taken care of the, the things that are preventing memory, then we can identify, again, bottleneck. Is it, um, you know, the speed of recall? Do we need a, a better person running back to grab that book? Is it how those books are organized, thought processing, or is it retrieval and context? And then once we, we've identified that, um, then, you know, we've got all these peptides that, that have similar properties like improving neurogenesis, improving synaptogenesis, things like that. But it makes it real, real clear, like which one's going to be the best one for the job. Excellent. So it comes down to, which is, I think, why we've been diving into a lot of these different components in the depth and mechanisms of action, because you really want to have an understanding of the mechanisms of action if you're going to use multiples and have a strategy to deploy that, right? Yeah, absolutely. The... Um, I'm probably the worst one to put this message out there, but the guy with the most vitamins in his closet isn't the one that that's going to win the race. It's the person with the supplements that they need at the right time, you know, use the least amount necessary and nothing less. Kind of like um, Einstein's, uh, how, how he talks about information, you know, explain things at the simplest level and no simpler. Um, and, you know, it's great to have all these tools at your disposal and there's, there's always going to be a right time for certain ones. Um, the key, though, to having long-term success in this, to really seeing benefits in terms of performance, cognition, those sorts of things, is understanding exactly what you said, understanding the pathways and mechanisms, being selective about your choices based on um, specific needs, and then, and I could do a better job of this, remembering to rotate it out when you don't need it anymore. So it's not just there in the background because kind of a, a interesting thing to think about literally any supplement we take, anything we do, um, essentially that's placing a very small demand on our body, not necessarily a bad one, but there's energy diverted to that. So if I'm taking five supplements that aren't hurting me, but I still have to digest, you know, they're still going to have some reaction in the body that's diverting energy away from the things that I do want in there working as well as I can. So, you know, again, when it comes to getting the most out of the least, um, the more streamlined and precise your program is, the more you understand the choices you're making, why they're in there, you leverage that and um, you have the fun of solving that puzzle. You know, it's the pathways, the mechanisms are not complicated. It's it's as easy as, um, you know, going on the internet, Google it, look it up, read it. And, uh, there you go. You got it. You got your, your pathway, you got your mechanism. And then, um, just, I mean, I'm, I'm a visual guy. So sometimes I'll even just lay it out on paper and then start to put your game plan together. And I can tell you, there is nothing like that feeling of satisfaction. Like when you put together that combo, there's a reason for everything. You see the outcome and it, it's funny because for me, it's a combination of surprise and excitement. I'm like, that worked. And part of it's like, man, you know, I mean, of course it worked. Like everything lines up, but the, it's the excitement of seeing like, wow, you know, I thought through this, I put it together. It's logical. You know, the mechanisms, the pathways, they never change regardless of your genetics, regardless, whatever. Um, the, those are going to be constants. And when you focus on those, like you really, you get these outcomes that people are just in awe of. And I'm in awe of when, when they're my outcomes and it, and it's fun. It's just like solving, solving a puzzle. Yeah. As you're telling this, I'm really being reflective of building a training program. Yep. Like we've got a lot of tools for exercises. 
and more is not better. Getting yep. very specific and targeted for those outcomes is going to get us better results in the long term so that our energy, our recovery resources as is is directed at what we want to accomplish. If I sit there and pick 20 programs, 20, 20 different exercises to train or even 10 different, you know, during the course of a workout, I'm likely not going to get results just because yeah. I, I read about yet another exercise <laughs> to add because it's super and exciting. Yeah. Uh, another mobility drill. You yeah. Know, that's the next greatest thing. But is it, is it specifically what do I, what do I need to attack to move forward right now? Yeah. Like, where are the weaknesses, you know, in, in my training that I need to address and how am I going to target that effectively and what am I going to pair out to make that happen? Yeah. And, and that's a perfect analogy because just like training, when you have things in there, you don't need, it's cutting into your recovery and recovery is where adap yeah. adaptation takes place. And, you know, it's <laughs> to further build on your analogy, do you want to be the guy laying down on the bench, to bench press a squat bar? Probably not. <laughs> I mean, you could do it, but I don't think it's going to yeah. improve your outcome you know, use the right tool for the job and don't use more tools than you need to. I, I think w whether we're talking about peptides or training, and I'm sure you'd agree that, um, you know, if you've got three lifts that you're absolutely perfect at and you can do really well, that's going to be better than having a um, hundred lifts that you really don't do that good of a job on, but it's entertaining. Yeah. And the same could be said with peptides, you know, we could build out as elaborate of a peptide protocol as as could be imagined and you know we could have 10 peptides in there but do we need pep 10 peptides in there i mean one it's going to be pretty expensive that's the most <laughs> obvious atrophy of the wallet <laughs> and um two if uh you know we, what's happening uh that we can't get that effect out of three you know if you can get the effect out of three more cost effective um a lot more user friendly more uh more practical um, you know, if you need 10, use 10, but yeah, um, just like with training and love that analogy, I'm going to borrow that. Um, right. it's, um, uh, it's all about efficiency and choosing the right tool for the job. Yeah. I think the last kind of thought I had on that is just like understanding your key performance, like indicators. So whether it's blood work or, you know, the objective, other objective measures or subjective measures that you have around, like, you know, mental clarity, yeah. brain, like, what do we really understanding what do I want to see as a marker for change and what do I anticipate being able to, to benchmark against that. So really great having this discussion, learning yeah. about some of the framework of your thought process and building uh, protocols. So thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Tex, if you want to build more physical resilience in your life, you need to start with a firm foundation. That's why I only wear barefoot shoes. Their wide toe box, zero drop heel, and flexible frames allow me to comfortably strengthen my foot every day while promoting optimal body mechanics, postural alignment, and movement. Listeners can get 10% off by using the code RESILIENCE at barefoot.store. That's B-E-A-R foot.store. For 10% off with code RESILIENCE, start improving how you move today with barefoot shoes.